Kenelia, Tara, Casey, and Juliana. Let me tell you guys something about the one Proto Zoa. Mm -hmm. The same one over the kingdom protista, such as Fragilate, Ciliate, and the one Sporon Zoa. Them are hard to see. And them say unicellular and microscopic. Careful of them. Them feel well and organic. Poor thing. And other microorganisms them love pick. Yes, I saw them steer them parasitic. That's why and them the name heterotrophic stick. Guess what? Them not have no nucleus, so we call them eukaryotic. Them not have no abiding city. Many different sizes and them live in wide variety. Them not care if a fresh water, marine environment, soil. Them just spread out in the community. On the other hand, them not have no cell wall. Yet still, some of them still motile. <laughs> if I laugh, I fall. Some have cilia. Some of them barely crawl. Look into this, because that's not all. The same protozoa cause some contention. Them parasitic infection generally produce some degree host of immunosuppression. This reduced immune response may delay antigenic detection. If too many variants in our system, we can't kill them. Big contradiction. Hope you not all listen and learn something if you did not pay attention. Hey mom, I learned something new in microbiology class today. Really? Tell me about it. As I told you the other day, we were looking at the topic, main groups of microorganisms. Today, we were discussing the protozoa, and under the protozoa came the Entomoba histolytica. Yes, I do remember you telling me about the bacteria and the viruses, but I have never heard about the protozoa. Tell me about this protozoan, Entomoba histolytica. The Entomoba histolytica is an anaerobic parasite, a mobozoan, and it is a part of the genus Entomoba. It predominantly affects humans and some primates, causing amobiasis or amobic dysentery. So where is it located, and what does it look like? It is located in the intestines, and it is spherical or oval in shape. It has a thin cell membrane and a single nucleus. It also has finger-like pseudopods, which allows it to move towards the colon. Interesting. So how does a person get infected? Entamoba histolytica has a simple life cycle consisting of cysts, which is the infectious form of the disease, and trophozoites, which is the motile stage of the disease. Infection occurs when mature cysts from fecally contaminated food, water, or hands enters the body through ingestion. Excitation then occurs, which is the releasing of trophozoites in the small intestines. They then migrate to the large intestines and multiply by binary fission and produces cysts and both stages are passed in the feces. So, what happens to the cysts and trophozoites after they leave the body? Because of the protection conferred by their walls, the cysts can survive days to weeks in the external environment and are responsible for transmission. Trophozoites passed in the stool are rapidly destroyed once outside the body. How long is the incubation period and what are the symptoms? The incubation period is 2 to 4 weeks and the symptoms include severe diarrhea, abdominal inflammation and pain, and the blood in the feces. Wow, thank you for sharing this with me. I found it very interesting and informative. It not only shows me the importance of proper hand washing, but also the importance of washing my fruits and vegetables properly before consumption. You are welcome, Mom. I can't wait for my next class so that I can share what I will learn with you. Welcome to the land of Acanthamoeba. What is an Acanthamoeba? Acanthamoeba is a microscopic, free-living amoeba, single-celled living organism, commonly found in the environment that can cause rare but severe illness. Acanthamoeba is found worldwide in areas such as rivers, seawater, swimming pool, drinking water systems, soil, dust. Origins of Acanthamoeba. The term acanth, Greek acanth, means spikes, was added to amoeba to indicate the presence of spine like structures, now known as acanthopodia, on its surface. It contains one or more prominent contractile vacuoles, whose function is to expel water for osmotic regulation. History of Acanthamoeba. Acanthamoeba was discovered in 1930 as a contaminant of yeast culture, Cryptococcus pararaceus, and was later placed in the genus Acanthamoeba, and then described as a causative agent of Acanthamoeba granulomatous encephalitis, AGE, in the 1960s and of keratitis. Shape of Acanthamoeba Acanthamoeba are round or oval in shape with diameter of 13.5 to 22.5 m and exhibited the presence of pseudopodia. Types of Acanthamoeba Three main types of rare clinical syndromes can be caused by acanthamoeba fatal granulomatous amoebic encephalitis that involves the brain and spinal cord, acanthamoeba keratitis that involves the eye, as well as disseminated infection that often manifests with various skin lesions. Signs and Symptoms Acanthamoeba keratitis varies greatly from person to person. Affected individuals may complain of eye pain, eye redness, 
Blurred vision. Sensitivity to light. Sensation of something in the eye. Excessive tearing. Disseminated infection, an infection where the germ enters the body through a single entry point and then disperses throughout the body, can occur both with and without, granulomatous amoebic encephalitis gay. Symptoms of gay include. Mental status changes. Loss of coordination. Fever muscular weakness or partial paralysis affecting one side of the body. Double vision. Sensitivity to light. Other neurologic problems. Disseminated infection typically shows up as inflammation of the lungs or sinuses, and or skin infections but has the potential to spread to the brain. Skin infections caused by acanthamoeba can appear as reddish nodules, skin ulcers or abscesses in the skin. Hi Dr. Hudson, good afternoon. Do you have some time to talk now please? So the other day I had sex with my partner and um, since recently I've been experiencing some stuff that's kind of concerning to me like the other day well since it's been about a, a week now and it's been getting worse and I feel like I need to talk to a doctor about it like what's been happening is that I have a frothy yellowish greenish discharge that's continuously coming and uh, <clears throat> I've also been having a lot of itching down there and it's really uncomfortable and at first I didn't really think anything of it so I continued you know having sex with my partner and I found that I was experiencing a lot of discomfort while we're having sex and I'm also experiencing a similar discomfort when I urine so I just wanted to check in to see what you possibly think I could be experiencing or suffering from. Okay, so um, Susan, based on what you just told me, um, not to alarm you or anything, but this is a definite STD. Uh, in order for us to deduce which one it is, you'd have to come in and perform a physical examination, as well as uh, I'd like for you to do a laboratory test. So yeah, so we can discuss which one it is or find out which one it is rather. Uh, I want to think, based on the signs and symptoms you're having, that it is Trichomonas vaginalis, which is really a curable std so yeah it, it, it is curable with proper treatment it is curable um but ask your partner for me if he saw or if he is seeing a discharge and ask him if he is also itching all right so just ask him that and we will discuss further wait 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 you've gone too far doc too too far what do you mean std why no no what do you mean std like 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 how hiv is a std you mean mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, no mm -mm, no doc no so doc you're telling me so dead man the dead you're telling me i'm about to die pretty much no man mm -mm, no doc mm -mm, mm -mm. i will i will come in though because i can tell what i'm experiencing is serious i will come in to do the test and go to the lab as you said but this std business mm -mm. i i am shocked I am, <laughs> that's not what I was thinking this would be. And as far as it goes, my partner, he's not itching. He has no discharge, nothing like that. So, you sure, Doc? All right, so most men with this disease, they're asymptomatic. So it could be possible he got infected, but is having no symptoms of the disease, right? No, 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 you won't die as this disease is curable with proper treatment. So as it is for now, both you and your partner should come in to see me as soon as possible. During this time, avoid sexual activities. If you do decide to have sex, please do so with a condom. It is important that when you are getting into a relationship, that you get you and your partner get tested before. All right. So see you soon, and be safe. Jardia Lamia is the most common parasitic disease. It was discovered in 1859 by Valian Lam. It can be found in contaminated water food on hands and surfaces when a person comes in contact with contaminated food or water they ingest the cyst form which is of an egg shape of the guardia lamnia parasite that is very infectious it travels through the, the digestive system down to the small intestine once it reaches the small intestine you develop a diarrheal disease called giardiasis symptoms takes one to two weeks to develop and the symptoms are fever stomach pain vomiting, foul smelling stool, and others. In the small intestine, the cyst releases two trophozytes, which are of pear shape through a process called excitation. 
Nitrophosites attaches to the lining of the small intestine where it multiplies by binary fission. It then feeds and absorbs nutrients, leaving the body dehydrated. It then moves to the colon where it transforms back into a cystate through a process called incitation and leaves the body to your stool. It becomes immediately infectious once it is in the stool. When it leaves your body via the stool, it can survive in cold water and soil for several months where the cycle is again repeated via another individual. Thank you.